In my previous video I took you through the simple steps to create your own garden room design and insulation options and that brings us on to the thorny topic of roof design, interstitial condensation and the warm roof, cold roof, hybrid roof stuff. The reason the position of your insulation is important specifically in your roof and especially on your flat roof or mono pitch roof is because of a couple of reasons, heat from the interior and vapour that comes from our bodies and things like kettles rises to the top of the interior and then permeates through the structure and can cause dampness and rot at that point and a flat roof is particularly susceptible to this vapour since a roof membrane uh, needs to be impermeable in order to be fully waterproof. In simple terms, a warm roof is where the insulation sits on top of the joists and therefore the roof deck is warm and a cold roof is where the insulation sits between with ventilated space in the void. A hybrid roof is a term that's recently cropped up. Uh, I certainly didn't come across it when I was studying all this stuff and I think this is where the insulation is pushed to the top. There's no ventilation space and I've seen solutions where an additional layer of insulation is placed on top to address potential cold bridging issues. Each of these insulation solutions will have slightly different ways to treat the vapour but all of them need to take account of the point at where this vapour and warm air meet the cold air from the outside and which we call the dew point. If that dew point happens inside the structure within the timber elements you will get gradual rot of your roof deck as moisture is created within the void and dampness begins to take hold and it can cause a lot of rot which in turn leads to some structural issues since initially you won't be able to see it and it can continue to build up. Now the best solution for keeping the dew point as far to the outside and away from the structure is a warm roof since the insulation is on the outside of the structure and the structure is therefore kept warm. Nothing's ever simple in building however and height issues can make a warm roof not feasible so we need to consider compromises. Next I might consider a cold ventilated roof since the ventilation and airflow within the cavity takes care of any moisture from condensation and the insulation is between not above the joists so any height issue is alleviated somewhat. However these are belt and brace options and for situations where the room is only used occasionally what has become known as a hybrid solution can definitely work. I'd make my decision based on occupancy. If it's an office and someone is in there seven or eight hours a day for five days or it's used for sleeping, I would say it's a relatively high occupancy, a bit like a house, and I'm erring on the side of caution and going for a warm roof and planning permission or a ventilated cold roof if I can or don't want to get planning permission and do it on permitted development since although it won't get you the required U values a ventilated cold roof will avoid getting problems with moisture buildup and potential rot where all the vapour condenses as it reaches the cold part of the roof which as I said is what we call the dew point However, that's a high occupancy roof and if you're just using it as an occasional room, maybe a few hours at the weekend and the odd evening, I might be okay with the method that's currently used by many where the insulation is pushed up hard against the roofing deck and there's enough examples of these projects now which aren't showing signs of moisture damage but I'd still prefer the cold ventilated roof if there were any doubt in my mind and I had the height restriction issue stopping me use a warm roof. In my time as an architect inspecting properties, the only instances I ever saw of interstitial condensation causing serious damage to the roof fabric was in a cold roof setup where no ventilation had been provided. For example, I saw it a lot in attic conversions. You know, I think it's clear that a sensible approach accepts there's no real right or wrong answer and successful and sustainable building, especially for the self-builder, is dependent on balancing the criteria for your own personal circumstances. Don't pay too much attention to the comments in the various Facebook and community groups on social media which take a sort of evangelical and holier than thou approach turning this issue into a yes or no debate. A lot of it is nonsense to be taken with a 
big pinch of salt, usually from theorists that never actually build or develop proper to doing your homework. And with all the info out there, you can begin to filter out the nonsense. And if you're building next door to your neighbor, you might want to keep your roof line as low as possible, just out of respect to their aspects and their views and the need to get along with everyone. Then there's your own unique design and material decisions that will always be different to everybody else. The only real golden rule is don't use a cold roof insulation solution unless you also provide ventilation. I'll probably make a video to go with this that focuses on vapour control as opposed to vapour barrier and well I hope that helps you with your choices for your insulation.